All right. Hey, Tracy Repchuk here. Good day, my friends. And I am the host of Reach Millions TV, an entrepreneurial lifestyle and learning channel where I educate and introduce you to some of the greatest powerhouses in their fields. Now, as an entrepreneur, there isn't much I haven't failed at, tried, encountered, or succeeded at. And over the course of my 37 years as an entrepreneur, after starting a software company at the age of 19, I wanted to show you how to find more leads, make more sales, and reach millions with your message. So you're going to be able to find out more about me at tracyrepchuk.com or reachmillionsacademy.com. Now, today, though, I have a very special guest, superstar Connie Durham, who is a certified speaker and trainer with the John Maxwell team. Connie's been married for over 40 years. She has three kids. I'm real close to you there. I'm 37. Um, and with their own families, Connie has served 21 years in leadership position with a direct sales company. And, and here's where it gets absolutely amazing. She has won seven diamond rings, two company cars, hundreds of prizes, including private parties at Universal's in California and the Atlanta Aquarium. Now, wouldn't you like to be her friend? <laughs> Connie believes in personal growth, communication, and seeing life from a other person's viewpoint. So that's really key, right? They, she finds those are the keys in developing a successful business and having a happy life. Now, Connie began clever, Connie's clever concepts in 2018 and now empowers couples and families with relationship saving communication skills and concepts. So Connie, welcome to the show. I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you, Tracy. Glad to be here. Awesome. Well, let's start off with what you're best known for, a relationship transformer. So tell us what that is. Well, we really take our relationships for granted these days. It's kind of like getting that job and then just taking it for granted and not learning anymore. You know, we get married and we just expect everything to go great for us. But so very often we bring in baggage from our past um, and that colors how we, we, we perceive everything in life. And so whenever you bring two people together and they just, you know, they're attracted and they fall in love and they get married, but then they start to see their differences. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where I come in. Um, uh, my ultimate class is a, a DISC class, which actually shares with people their personality styles. But what I have found, there's so much that needs to happen before that so that people start to pay attention to the challenges maybe that they're having in their relationship. Absolutely. I mean, uh, without communication and trust, you're, you're proof yourself, right? You've been married for 40 years. You know, Dave and I have been together for an extremely long time as well. We, um, we also work together 24 seven without communication, without that, um, you know, I'll call it like you did clearing of the baggage. Dave and I did so much work um, on, on ourselves together, which was a very interesting thing. And then on ourselves, right. Separately, and then brought it back on, on ourselves together in, in the spiritual journey, actually, that we have gone through. And so it's great to know that there is this ability, um, of help because if your relationship isn't functioning very well, as you know, right. Then the rest can start to collapse, including anything you're trying to do in business or your career. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Now, let me, let me ask you this next question. That is to achieve what you have in direct sales. That speaks to a very high level of skill. You, you're like definitely in that top 2%. And I'm a lover of sales skills. Uh, and I found, of course, each person has a, a different way that they accomplish that, you know. So were you like a master seller at a young age or did you acquire and hone those skills? So tell us a little bit about that. Well, really, um, as I started, it was actually with Mary Kay Cosmetics. Nice. And whenever I started with that company, I had three little kids and I literally thought, oh, that would be so fun to make people look pretty and feel good about themselves. And so that's where I started. I did not have any sales skills whatsoever. I only knew that that would be great to make people look good and feel good about themselves. The second area that interested me in that company was, I'm like, 
oh, and there's prizes. How can I win those prizes? And so that's what got me started. You know, it's kind of like whenever we just get excited and we, we start into something and then we have to figure it out along the way. So Mary Kay had a lot of training and as a sales director for 21 years, I also uh, was able to train people. And so it's a journey and mm -hmm. it is something that you have to keep working on and keep working on and practicing. It's like anything, you can't just learn it by reading it. You have right. to do it and you have to take action. And every time you do take action, you know, it, it grows your skills. For that company, the thing was, is um, getting the appointment. Once you mm -hmm. got the appointment and people put product on their face, now I didn't really have to be a great seller. I just said, mm -hmm. well, are there some things you would like today? And they would say, I would like this, this, and this, and this, and this. And then I learned great customer service. Mm -hmm. And so I think everybody's personality is different. Some people are really direct. Some are very service-minded. And so I became very service-minded. And so as I always kept in mind what was good for them, I was not thinking about myself. Mm -hmm. No, I was thinking about what was good for them. And so as long as I did that, I think that's a great selling tool is to remember to think how your customer thinks and it's all about them. Because if you ever had a bad service somewhere where somebody and you're like, I'm not going back there again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, you brought up three amazing points there. One, one you just touched on at the end, right? The, the ability for somebody to talk about a bad experience is is on the same order of magnitude as a great experience right you know especially women we go out and we say oh my god that was like the best food you just have to go to this restaurant we're natural recommenders but at the same time right we'll go out and we will say man don't don't go anywhere near that the food was horrible or this was horrible about that and that is why customer services you learn so so early is key. And then how did you take that where you are and move that into the, the business and, and, and kind of what you're doing now? Okay, that's a great question. Thanks for that. All right, so as I was with Mary Kay, I was actually with the company for 30 years. And for wow. 21, I was a director. And you know, my favorite part, we always find a favorite part of what we do. My favorite part was sharing with my consultants, helping them grow and seeing them grow. And so my passion really became to pour into others. And I was um, more excited about that than anything else was to pour into others and to be able to watch them grow and them succeed and, and the, you know, watch them do great. And so, you know, change does not happen very easily. So in 2004, I had went to a, a disc training for an entire week. I spent an entire week learning about this. We used it a little bit in Mary Kay and I thought this is intriguing. And that is the study of the personality styles. And I actually mm -hmm. call that the hardwired behavior blueprint, because when people start to learn what that is, they can learn about themselves. They learn where they're good. They learn where they have challenges. And then when they can learn that about other people, it helps them to move forward in whatever they're doing. Now I'm specializing in relationships, but it's not just your personal relationship. When you learn this, you also can use it in your business in every direction. So in 2004, whenever I uh, went to this training, I came home and I was so passionate and so excited about it. And, um, you know, I was still a director in Mary Kay. And, you know, there's many of us, we work something for 20 years and then like, we need something else. I need somewhere mm -hmm. else to grow. That excites me. So I was very excited about it. I used it in my business some. Um, I piddled with it a little bit, but I did not really move in that direction. But it was always hidden in my heart. My favorite thing, I love to use it to find solutions and to help people with many, many things. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, I began with John Maxwell, the John Maxwell team, and I got that training. And I had no idea what direction uh, that God was leading me. And I literally felt led. It was one thing in front of the other one that just happened and moved me a little more forward and a little more forward. So in 2018, that's when I began to trans, uh, uh, not transform, but uh, to move 
from Mary Kay to what I'm doing now. Mm. And then it's just been an awesome journey ever since because you want to talk about sales? I have like had to learn all the processes of being online. I think everybody had to do that last year if you're going to keep moving, right? So it's been, you know, a very exciting journey and I, I love what I do. And so basically everything that I've done through life has been something that I loved. I mm-hmm. start out teaching uh, dance. I taught dance for 20 years. Wow. And um, I say, don't overlap everything. I'm not that old, right? But, I was just uh, going to say, you're like 78 here? <laughs> yeah, I'm not that old. So, you know, yeah. things always overlap. You know, you sometimes you yeah, got to yeah. begin something new before you let go of something old. And then you yeah. know when that point is, when you have to let go of the other so you can focus on your one thing, that thing that's most important to you. I, I agree. You know, I, I read a book called um, The Science of Survival. And it talked about, you know, the, the 21, what we'll call tone levels of people. And then you, you move and you can see all of their behaviors associated. So you could detect uh, people and where they were. What I really loved about this book is you could meet somebody and you could know, you know, hey, that is a person I should totally connect with. I should hang out with, would be a great client or this is a person that would be a disaster to hire, to hang out with, all of it, right? It showed you the entire scope so that you knew as well how to keep yourself safe as you grow. Because, because as we get bigger, as we reach larger audiences, we, you know, a lot of vampires, dream stealers start to come in and want to take you down a peg or two. And, and I found at one point in my life that uh, that was happening to me. And, and, and I started to shrink and pull back and be quieter and not come on camera and not do all of these things. After I read that book and started to apply the technology, as you've mentioned, um, that changed everything for me. I just became a warrior because I knew this person, I don't need them uh, in my life or near me. They're gone, you know, banned, gone, deleted, whatever uh, needs They're to happen. Dream stealer, right? Yeah. You got to stay away from the dream stealers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, it, lots of things that you've done, I can also see, you know, you built a team. You had to have. You are a leader. You couldn't have gone where you did in Mary Kay or be where you are if you weren't. You know, what was your, was your favorite part of that? My favorite part of growth or building a team or any what? of it, you know, what, what really cranked your juice? Cause, cause uh, uh, that's not easy. You know, I'm in a leadership position as well and there's a lot of responsibility and it's hard and you're managing all of these things, but what was your favorite part? Well, I would say one of the very important things about my past business, which was being a sales director with Mary Kay was the support. Mm-hmm. And see, quite often entrepreneurs are out there by themselves and they don't have that support. They don't have anybody to lift them. But my answer to that, if you don't have a team of people, there's several things that you can do. You know, you can join a mastermind group of professionals mm-hmm. where you all kind of support each other and that kind of thing. Um, for me, I had never been a reader and it shows that, you know, what you do at this time does not mean what you'll do in 10 years. So suddenly as I began this, I began to crave information, to crave uh, training and all of this kind of thing. So I also read positive books. And you know, my mama always said, don't write in your books. (laughs) But guess what? I started writing in every book that I had because as I would read it, it's like the words would just jump off the page to me um, in, uh, in a useful way for what I was doing. So I made notes and everything. I had dog-eared pages and I started on that mission of self-growth. And the more that I read and the more that I grew, the more my passion grew for what I was doing. And it was not an easy journey though. Let me tell you one thing I was thinking on the sales earlier is that one way, and this is for everybody who's in any kind of business, one way uh, to connect with people quite often is uh, to pay attention to their speed. So this is one point on those personality styles. So you can pay attention to their speed. And I remember back in the day, 
this takes you way, way back. You know, when answer machines first came out and yeah. uh, remember the first message, if you're old enough, you can remember the first message you put on something and, and you're like, as I put it on there and I listened back, I was like, whoa, that was way too fast and too perky, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so on the same sense, sometimes people's messages dead and yeah. slow and doesn't get to the point. And mm -hmm. so as uh, speakers or people in sales or anybody relating to the public, you're dealing with people. If you have a very methodical style, I like that word better than slow because it doesn't mean you are a slow person, right? But a methodical uh, style, which means you basically maybe speak, you know, uh, slower. And that's because you're thinking that, you know, right. as you're talking and right. then, you know, decisions and all that kind of stuff. So if you're working with somebody, pay attention to the speed of how quickly they speak. If they're a quick person, mm -hmm. then they like to listen to click. If they are a slower paced person, they like to listen to a slower pace and can't quite tolerate too much perkiness or too much um, quickness. And so that's a great um, tool, you know, for everybody to apply today to whatever they're, they're doing. But um, <laughs> Yeah, hundred um, percent agree with that. In fact, in that book I was telling you about, the science of survival, um, it, it had the the same thing. We, it was called matching, and that is some of the best advice I have heard as well. Because I'm a fast talker and I'm a fast processor, mm -hmm. and I go nuts if I'm listening to somebody who's slow and methodical, and likes to you know, and so. I learned, I taught myself how to, oh, here we are. Okay, so now I will go just a half above that. They say, just go a little bit above that so you can kind of move, keep moving them on, a, you know, uh, to a, a little bit of betterment for themselves as whether a little bit of speed and things of that nature. So it's, it's funny you brought that up because it was a skill I did not have. I'm incredibly impatient, or I'll say I was incredibly impatient because one of the things I've mastered, you know, as well as I think I can is patience um, and, and superb advice. So if you were to do this over again, is there anything you would, would change? Mm, that's a really big question. I think I probably would have began what I'm doing earlier, but then there's a but. but you know, there's timing in everything. And then, like I said, in 2018, as I began this, then the John Maxwell uh, uh, opportunity came. All this was a direction for me to teach DISC behavior mm -hmm. styles. Um, and so, you know, I really don't know if I would change anything because I enjoyed my journey. It's kind of like whenever you have a little baby, you know, and you enjoy every single stage of that child as they grow up. Um, mm -hmm. it's like, I've enjoyed every stage, but I, I probably, I wish I would have started reading more earlier, but I just wasn't a reader. I like just to be with people and I like for people to speak my training and not to read it. So somebody right. out there, right? So um, you've mentioned books a couple of times. So what are a couple that you would say to people, you know what, it, it really needs to be almost part of your core. If you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you really want to, you know, get your communication going. Well, a couple of the books that I especially, uh, something that made a big difference to me uh, was The One Thing. And it's, uh, yeah. I'm a visual person. I can tell you it's a white me book too. with black writing. Um, it says The One Thing. And I'd already heard that many, many times before, even back in my Mary Kay training. But mm -hmm. suddenly one day I read that and I realized. So as I started my own business as an entrepreneur, without all the guidance of a big company like Mary Kay, I had mm -hmm. to figure it out as I went. And one of the biggest things that kills an entrepreneur is focusing on too many things at once. You know, what does a confused mind do? Nothing, Nothing. right? <laughs> so uh, the one thing was really an important book. There again, I read it right at mm -hmm. the time when I needed to do that. And so um, also the John Maxwell books, because I read a bunch of those and they have a lot of success, uh, success techniques in them. Um, there again, I write in my books and I go back and look at important things. I find great quotes. I like anything also that encourages me and keeps me lifted. So Tracy, just like you talked about 
um, you know, that challenge sometimes of being an entrepreneur and the ups and the downs, the ups and the downs. And sometimes that word no from people, you know, no just means maybe they need more information or it's not good for them right now. And yeah, there's a yeah. lot of reasons that people um, have to say no sometimes. Like I get a lot of different training opportunities. There's a lot of free trainings out there. And so let's go back to that one thing you have mm-hmm. to say. Is this something that I should do today? And no matter how wonderful that speaker is, is this something I need today that's going to help me move forward? And so sometimes we have to say no to one thing so we can say yes to another thing, right? Absolutely. Because you, you can't keep pulling on your plate. And some of the feedback we're getting is they love your take on support and customer service and the excellent and constant learning. I am a a consummate learner as well. I'm always reading. I'm always taking courses. Same thing. I I, I think it's really an important part, especially at the pace of where, you know, the world's going, right? Technology wise, I'm in that field. So I have to stay um, abreast. And then at the same time, you mentioned the key catalyst to it all, which was focus, right? Mm -hmm. That one thing. Because, you know, doing 20 social media platforms is not smart, right? Not where, where's your target market? What platform are they on? And, and, and things of that nature. It's, it's just a very important piece. So, um, you know, it's been, it's been so much fun, really, uh, getting to know you better, to, to introducing you to my audience and to really showing both sides of you, like where you have come. You came from direct sales and you're in a different area now, like I think everybody, right? We are evolving. Every single thing we do is a stepping stone and a, a piece that we needed to be able to do the, the thing where, you know, I'll call it destined to do, have to do, um, you know, moving more towards that um, mission in life or, or satisfying your purpose. So how can people uh, connect with you? Where would you like them best to find out more about you? Well, I have several things on my website and it's called Connie's Clever Concepts. And when I began my business, um, you know, I was headed in the direction of business and sharing the personality styles to team build with businesses. Mm -hmm. And then uh, through a whole nother story, I have a, really involved, really dealing with couples and that kind of thing. So on my site, you can find uh, 25 things that help you grow your relationship. Uh, So there's a handful of freebies and you can choose whichever one you want or all of them, but it's Connie'sCleverConcepts.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that information uh, with us. I'm actually going to uh, stop the recording and then, uh, you know, uh, those of those who are still here can ask a couple questions that they'd like. This is kind of the live portion of the show and and that's what you get for showing up. And um, those that don't, uh, you can watch this replay, enjoy the information and connect with Connie after.